Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up, as you can tell from the title. And I only read five books in December, and there's a good reason for that, <laughs> and you will see why. So the first book that I have here is called Untold Night and Day by Bay Sua. This book is a fever dream that spans an entire night and day, hence the title. On a hot and muggy day, Ayami is saying goodbye to her box office job because it is closing permanently that day. As she walks the street with her boss and a visiting poet, the lines of reality start to blur, leaving us wondering which is real because the storylines and the timelines intermingle with one another. The repeated yet mixed up storylines are so beautifully done that it doesn't really matter which is real because it's like a wild ride. And not only that, the storyline or the main plot doesn't really seem as important. I just thought that this book was just a quick and easy read that I really enjoyed. I wasn't sure at first because it does get a bit confusing when the storylines start to resemble one another, but once that, once you go past that, it becomes very interesting and the ending, how it wraps up is pretty good. The next book that I have here is called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is your typical YA murder mystery thriller. In this particular story, we follow Pippa Fitz Amobi. She's a senior at this school, which I don't remember the title of, and she's working on her capstone senior project. Her project focuses on Andy Bell and Sal Singh, who were a couple and are now both dead. But Sal Singh was the main and prime suspect for the murder of Andy Bell. Um, unfortunately, he committed suicide and we can't ask him any questions. <laughs> Pippa's mission is to prove the innocence of Sal because she kind of knew him through her best friend's sister as they were friends. Um, and she does this through the use of, or I guess partnership with Sal's younger brother, Ravi. And as they get more drawn into the storylines, they find some discrepancies and secrets that become dangerous for them to know. Anyway, this is it. Just a quick and easy read for anyone. And I would always recommend YA Mysteries because you know they're going to tend to be similar and pretty good. The next book that I have here is called Must I Go by Yi Yun Lee. And this is an epistolary epistolary <laughs> novel. Yes, I did just learn that word, but it is basically a novel made up of letters. And more specifically, it is letters from Roland, who was the narrator's, Lilia's, fling when she was younger that resulted in their child. As we move through the book, Lilia is writing to her granddaughter, um, which would be Roland's granddaughter as well and just kind of filling in her blanks to Roland's letters and giving them some information that obviously she knew, but Roland kind of left out of his letters and stuff like that. She's kind of adding to what Roland has written. So Lily and Roland's child, Lucy, committed suicide. And since Roland never knew about her, um, Lilia is the one that's holding on all this information and she wants her grandchildren or specifically Lucy's child and her granddaughter to know the story of Lily and Roland's romance. I didn't like this book at all. <laughs> it was very slow paced. Roland is not a good person. He's kind of like mean and rude and just like not a nice man and his characteristics don't get any better he's kind of egotistical annoying and his letters were very very boring not only that his letters composed this entire book and i lost interest i didn't care about roland i didn't care about lilia lilia is not a good person either so i understand why they got together she kind of just has this careless manner of showing her emotions she doesn't really care about anyone or how they feel she thinks like you know death is inevitable which is true but she doesn't 
understand or care for other people's grief or emotions she's kind of just like whatever that's life that kind of personality which is just very annoying considering she has so many children like and you kind of see like that is why certain things happen and how her children perceive her etc etc um mainly because Lilia is held up on Lucy's death which makes sense it's her daughter but she doesn't seem to understand why Lucy could have thought about killing herself or any of that like all of that is just out of her mind and it seems like she wants to blame Roland for that but yeah she's not a good person either so not saying that certain things happen because of her but I think her lack of understanding definitely added to that. The next book that I have here is called His Only Wife by Peace Adsomedi. This book takes place in Ghana and we are flung right into the book with the start of Afi getting married to Ellie Kim. But Ellie Kim is not there for the wedding so in place of him she is marrying his brother as Ellie Kim. What she doesn't realize is that by marrying him she's marrying the family. She's told by Auntie Ella Kim's mom and siblings that the reason that she's needed to marry Ellie is because they do not approve of the woman that he's with currently. They pretty much just talk a bunch of shit about this woman and say she's ugly, she's rude, she's disrespectful to him and his family, she's always holding him hostage, she put voodoo on him, she's kind of like using some kind of power to make sure that he stays with her and kind of like disobeys his family. The family thought that by having him marry Afi that she would be very obedient and listen to them because they're kind of a very powerful family but what they didn't realize is that Afi has a backbone and I was loving her. She was very adamant, she was very straightforward and knew exactly what she wanted and would you know, go to the extremes to make sure that she got it. Soon after, Afi realizes that maybe that family is not as good as she originally thought and that they are kind of used to having power and control over everyone. And yeah, it's a family drama and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It's also very funny so I feel like anyone would enjoy this book. So the final book that I have here is one that I didn't think I would complete this year for various reasons, but mainly because of the size. <laughs> this is Duck's Newberry Port by Lucy Elman. It is written in a stream of consciousness with no paragraph breaks as you would expect, except for when we follow along another story that is progressing alongside it. And that story is written in the typical style of fiction. This book takes place in New Commerstown, Ohio, and we follow a woman as she bakes pies to deliver to local restaurants and worries about her four children and husband. We get to hear all her unprovoked inner thoughts and anxieties about the current president, gun laws and school shootings, not having enough money or being able to afford health insurance, her grief about her parents' deaths, but more specifically her relationship with her mother and how she needs her mother, and basically any other worries about any and everything that pertains to her or her surroundings. As mentioned, there is another story alongside it that gives you a much needed break. We follow a mountain lion and her cubs in a world where there are similar threats and anxieties that can affect them. I love how Elman weaves these stories together so beautifully and especially the last three to four hundred pages where the stories kind of get wrapped up. It is a hefty book so I'm not sure I would recommend it to lots of people just because I mean this is what you're dealing with so not sure if you can see that. This is pretty much what you're dealing with for about a thousand pages <laughs> so I would recommend it if you do need a book alongside another um, and just progress through this one very slowly but if you're gonna read it like I did which I read it in two weeks which I thought was fine because I had the story in my head throughout the two weeks but 
uh, yeah, I would still recommend it either way. I would probably recommend it as an audiobook, even though I am not one to listen to audiobooks, but the way that it's written, I feel like would work well as an audiobook. Anyway, guys, that is all the books that I read in December. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one. I'll be back in the morning. Too many